Fantastic. So from a brocade perspective, obviously there's there's a heavy investment in conversion networking. How is wh What technologies is Brocade bringing to the table that would enable private clouds and clouds in general via a converged network or a converged infrastructure? Well, I, I, I think if you look at data centers in general, right? You have data centers and service providers and data centers that are internal to organizations. And there are a lot of um, pr problems that are consistent with both of those, right? You have to be able to scale the infrastructure up and down. You're trying to break down the different silos between the technology areas within the data center. You're effectively trying to get to an infrastructure that is um, that's uh, morphable with software, that's provisionable with software, um, that you can uh, cut up to meet the needs of the applications and reallocate to meet the needs of the applications. Today, what happens in the data center is, you know, traditionally we've built data centers by effectively replicating, um, you know, components. So we've taken an application, we've put it on a compute node, we attach it to an appropriately sized uh, Ethernet and fiber channel network, and then we, we repeat that process um, until we run out of applications. And, and the result of that has been, as we all know, very low server utilization, something around 15%, uh, depending on whose numbers you listen to. Sure. Um, and it's um, and uh, customers are spending 60 or 70 percent of their total IT budget just running that infrastructure, and it tends to be uh, very static, very complicated, very difficult to run. And because of that complexity, it's expensive, it's fragile, and it makes it very, very difficult to move applications around. Right? Virtualization. Uh, a couple of years ago, our customers started implementing virtualization as a mechanism for multiplexing applications on the compute nodes. So instead of one application per compute node, you would have four or five or 10 or 15 applications per compute node, and that drove the utilization of that server infrastructure up considerably and drove the network utilization up and resulted in a, a pretty sizable network overhaul. Um, today, um, most of the servers in the data center running virtualization are attached to fiber channel networks. Most of those networks are running at eight gigabit. Uh, something in excess of you know 90% of the networks that are installed today in fiber channel or 8 gigabit uh, networks, and you're seeing a very large adoption of uh, 10 gigabit networks on the on the Ethernet side, and some I/O consolidation at the top of rack uh, via technologies like FCOE, where we're consolidating both the, the block I/O and the IP I/O onto a single set of adapters, and then splitting those off at the at the top of rack. Um, you mentioned a little bit uh, about automation, so you were hinting towards automation. Uh, is it safe to assume that uh, a lot of the brocade products that are going to come out are going to have APIs that could tie into orchestration software that make it easy to provision uh, these compute resources um, for the networking portion at least? And well, there's a, couple, there's a couple big problems in there, right? One of the problems that you talked about, uh, one of the things we have to do with the network infrastructure as well as storage and compute nodes is we have to modularize those in the same way way that virtualization has allowed us to wrap a virtual container around an application and make that application mobile and make that application detachable from the network infrastructure. We have to accomplish that same level of virtualization but within the network uh, you know, infrastructure. And so the direction that we're taking is to, uh, to facilitate that level of um, virtualization within the network infrastructure, um, allow virtual machines, you know, first by really um, uh, accommodating what happens in a virtual machine world today, so creating very large layer two surface areas okay. uh, that are initially within the data center um, that allow you know, pods of virtual machines, increasing the sphere of mobility for virtual machines. So, for example, today uh, virtual machines move um, fairly seamlessly, but within a very limited scope of range, you know, very limited range inside of the data center. It's limited to within a VLAN. Okay. Um, and so today, to get to, to get them to move between data centers, we're trying to stretch those VLANs between data centers, and that okay. takes a tremendous amount of traffic engineering and bandwidth and configuration and to all that, stuff. that okay. right? So the approach that we're taking is to start by creating very large layer two surface areas um, inside the data center um, to increase that sphere of mobility instead of just being within a VLAN to allow it to be, let's say, 10,000 VMs wide. Um, and then to automate as much of the network infrastructure as we can to um, uh, connect things back up. So when a virtual machine moves, reestablish its connections to uh, existing resources, right? I mean, there's no reason that the network administrator should have to go through a bunch of hoops to reconnect things up. That should just happen uh, automatically. We're building technology today that facilitates that automatic reconnection and that virtual machine awareness within the network infrastructure itself. 
Are you able to tell us when we can see some of that stuff? Is well, it when we publicly announced a lot of this, this is the virtual cluster switching technology that we talked about at our technology day back in June. Uh, and we've said publicly that we're going to ship that technology by the, uh, by the end of the year. And uh, we're on track to go do that. Um, so that is uh, pr particularly good for uh, frameworks like VMware uh, because it just creates a very um, large, seamless environment uh, where the virtual machine administrator can concentrate on provisioning and managing virtual machines and managing servers and moving those according to their business need. And we'll take care of the network infrastructure in the background and make sure that they maintain connectivity to the things that they're supposed to maintain. That infrastructure, by the way, has to be capable of carrying both IP traffic and block storage traffic. Because if you move a virtual machine, right. you have to reconnect it up to all the IP resources. You also have, to also have to reconnect it back up to the storage infrastructure that was talking to uh, before. Uh, and long term, you'll, you'll see us take those layer two flat surface areas and um, we'll support multi-tenancy within those environments. And we'll support the ability to um, extend those over distance. So now we have multi-tenancy, we have the ability to support it over distance, and what we get is uh, fully functional virtual machine mobility that works between data centers and works for both storage traffic and for, uh, for data traffic. So that's the, uh, and, and when you get that, the capabilities of private and public cloud infrastructure begin to blow. Merge, yep. Right, they begin to merge. Um, one thing I've always wanted to ask Brocade, and I think this is a perfect opportunity, is are we ever going to see a type of virtual switch that comes from Brocade similar to uh, the Nexus 1000V from Cisco? I think we would not be inclined to do a, uh, a layer two saw switch. Okay. Uh, and, the, and the reason for that is um, uh, as popular as VMware, customers it is, customers like the flexibility uh, to be able to support multiple hypervisors in their environments. Uh, there are things like LPARs that are running on Solaris systems. There's hypervisor frameworks under HPUX and AIX and other systems. Uh, and I think we have a um, we, we have a feeling internally that people want to take those resources and migrate them forward. So we want to develop virtualized solutions that that work extraordinarily well with VMware, but also allow customers to support hyper, other hypervisor frameworks and other virtualization schemes that they may have deployed in different parts of their network. So we're not going to specify a particular uh, environment that they have to uh, operate in. Okay. Uh, last question. I, w I want to get your personal opinion on a solution like VBlock. Is Brocade looking to to replicate that with other OEM partners, and do you see value in that? Uh, well, the answer is I see tremendous value in it. Okay. I think that um, I think it's a very well known fact within uh, the, the IT industry that vertically integrated stacks always eventually fail. All of them. They, they and they fail because um, the early functionality that you get by vertically integrating a solution eventually gets overcome by lower cost that results from standards and open systems integration and just good old fashioned competition between the component uh, and vendors. Uh, so while a vertically integrated stack I think gets you a very early market lead and has some very interesting functionality in it, over the course of two or three or four years, uh, you get to a, a, a much better uh, price performance level and a much better functionality level by allowing the open integration of best of breed components within the industry. And that's the strategy that we have and that's the strategy that we support as well as uh, many of the partners that we work with on a uh, you know, on a day-by-day -day basis. Okay, so you're, you're going to go down the converged infrastructure path, but you're going to do it in a more open fashion where it's not a block. This is what you buy. It, you're, you're allowing people to mix and match best of breed. Sure, you pick, pick the server you want. Pick, pick uh, Dell, pick IBM, pick HP. Uh, you know, uh, take the network connectivity, running both storage traffic, Ethernet traffic, right? That'll converge over time. And then pick the storage uh, technology that is uh, appropriate for what you want to do. Uh, pick iSCSI, pick NAS, uh, use Ecologic, use NetApp, use EMC, uh, you know, use fiber channel block storage, uh, use Ethernet attached FCOE storage, right? You should be able to make that selection or use any combination of those things in these virtual compute blocks. Um, and uh, and get uh, uh, an equivalent level of functionality out of that for a much better value. As long as there's APIs that plug into a management console that can orchestrate all of that together. Well, it's APIs, but it's also industry standards, right. and it's testing and blueprints, and just sure. a lot of hard work to put it together and make sure it works. But I think that's the path that we're on as an industry. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. It's great to see you. You too.